Good morning, Community of Hope family, and good morning anyone else who's joining in. Um, I want to welcome you. These are unique and crazy days, and so what we're really doing as a church is trying to stay connected in as many ways as we can. And so one of the things we talked about doing was um, I usually journal with a group of guys uh, every Tuesday morning, which we're not able to do right now. So I thought instead of journaling with a group of guys, I would just do my daily journal with the whole church family. So uh, this morning what I want to do is take just a moment and read um, my journal entry and remind everybody how we do this. Remember, this is a process we've been doing in our church for, um, gosh, well over... Uh, almost now two decades we're going to come up on, and that's learning how to journal the scriptures and read daily scriptures and then do an, uh, a scripture observation application and prayer. And this has been a spiritual discipline in my life now almost for 20 years, and it's been something really that has formed me spiritually. And in fact, many of you will ask me sometimes, you'll say, hey, where, where do you even get the idea for messages or series or this sort of thing? a lot of it comes out of this daily practice. So I want to show you what I'm doing and then just sort of read, read through my own daily uh, journal today and hope it's an inspiration to you uh, as it has been to me. So we begin always with a scripture and so today's reading is out of 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and I'm reading verses 19 through verse 23 and this is how Paul says it. He says, though I am free and belong to no one, I have made myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. To the Jews, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those who are under the law. To those uh, not having the law, I became like one not having the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law so as to win those not having the law. To the weak I became the weak, to win the weak. In fact, I have become all things to all people, so that by all possible means I might save some. I do this for the sake of the gospel, that I may share in its blessings. And then as an applica application, this is what I observe, or observation, this is what I observed. Paul the Apostle continues to give a clear defense for the message of the gospel. And in this chapter, he willingly and courageously steps into his God-assigned role as an ambassador and a witness to the life-changing power of Jesus Christ. He writes witnesses and acts, not as a salesperson hawking spiritual wares, but as a deeply satisfied participant and recipient of God's grace given to him. His message is both comforting as well as challenging, especially so within the unique season that we find ourselves in. And here's my application. I said it's been attributed to the wit and wisdom of Winston Churchill, the statement, never waste a good crisis. And within these familiar words, I read again from the Apostle Paul, I find myself connecting the line between his ancient challenge and our present circumstance. These are strange days. In some ways, for most of us, our world seems to hum along with the appearance on the outside, at least, of what it normally does. But if you look closer, you can see how different things really are. People are outside, they play in their yards, they sit in their lawn chairs, and they busy themselves around their homes. If you do leave your home, something many of us feel conflicted about, traffic is down, things seem slower, and the quiet has come over our town. But a closer look reveals the anxiety many of us feel. You can see it on our faces and just behind the small talk from six feet away. It's different. It's really different. But when I read Paul's words this morning, they remind me that when, within all of the change and challenge of our current circumstance rest a timeless challenge for followers of Jesus to embrace our present circumstance and become willing to enter into someone else's world knowing full well that doing so opens both heavenly doors and provides spiritual potential. Paul tells me that to the Jew he became a Jew, and to the one under the law he became one under the law. To the lawless he became like one without the law, and to the weak he became the weak. To me, I could just as easily read it this way. To the lonely I became lonely with them. To the anxious I became anxious too. 
to the unemployed or furloughed, I became furloughed as well. And even to the sick, I became sick also. Paul reminds us of the incredible power that rests in those willing to enter into the pain and the circumstance of another and allow God to use us in this special circumstance. Now, I know from my own reading that one of the unique names of the Holy Spirit is the Greek word paraclete, which describes the unique way the Holy Spirit enters into the circumstances of another. It's something God, by his Holy Spirit, gives believers the power to do. We can enter in, we can see the circumstance, or to put it more plainly even, we can learn in these days to walk a mile in another man's shoes. These are unique moments for our church to be the church and for the church's people to run the race that is set before us. And with all that's in me, I feel God's presence inviting me as he's done time and time before, not to waste any present crisis we find ourselves in, but to step into the God moments all around us and to point people to his hope and to be his hands and his feet. It's the spiritual opposite of social distancing, and it works. Here's my prayer. Lord Jesus, even as I pray today for my daily bread, use me for your purpose and for your glory to be part of the daily bread of someone else. This I pray in your power and in your name. Amen. You know, I want to remind everybody that this is a tremendous moment to be the church. We're hearing so many great things about you as a church family. We're reaching out in our small groups. We're extending our reach into our communities and our neighborhoods. We're, we're obeying what our, uh, you know, elected officials and our medical professionals are telling us to do. And this is really, really a good thing. I believe with all my heart we're going to get through this. And I'm going to tell you something. I believe, and there are early even indicators of this, I believe we're going to be a stronger and more powerful church and more powerful witness to the love of Jesus because of what we're going through. So I'm going to join you again and invite you to join me in my journaling. There are other opportunities. Stay connected to all of our social media sites to find as well updates of everything we're doing. And invite your friends to worship with us online again this coming weekend at uh, Sunday 9, 10, 30, and noon, and then Sunday night at 5 o'clock. I love you, I miss you, and I know I'll see you soon.